Okay, so I'm going to talk now about the data store and I'm going to share my screen. And we are going to start with what is the data store? So the data store is, um, it's basically a, a key value store uh, for storing JSON objects in the DHS2 database. This is really handy because it allows you to, um, to not only uh, store things that fit very well into the DHS2 data models, things like um, data sets, indicators, um, data values, uh, visualizations, things like that, um, that have a pretty rigid structure. Um, so it, for a lot of things, it makes sense to um, store them in the DHS2 data model, particularly uh, Martin is raising his hand. Um, okay, yeah, the data store is a key value store that, that fits into the DHS2 database. Um, if possible, it should, you should always look at using the DHS2 data model to model the things that you want to save from, from your application because that makes it much easier to, um, uh, for, for other apps and the core apps to interact with that data as well. Um, but there are some cases where what uh, is possible out of the box by, or provided out of the box by the DHS2 uh, data, database and the data model uh, isn't a good fit for the application that you're building. So in order to address that, we have uh, two data stores actually in DHS2. One is called the user data store, and that is uh, specific to the DHS2 user who is currently logged in. Um, so anything in the user data store can only be seen by that one user. Um, whereas in the data store, it's a global uh, key value store, which means that when you put an object into the data store, the global data store, it can, it's visible and editable by everyone by default. Um, so there actually is a, a fair amount that you want to consider that we'll talk about tomorrow in terms of uh, how to set the sharing settings on objects in the data store to make sure that they are um, restricted to the people who should actually have access to them. Um, you have to to be a little bit careful when you're putting things into the data store because you might be you don't want to store everything in a very public and editable way. Um, so what kinds of things might you store in the data store or the user data store? Um, for web applications, the two major use cases that we'll talk about today that um, that I've seen people using are for settings for their application and for saved objects. Um, We've actually built a library that is a wrapper around the data store API um, and provides support for these two use cases. Um, what, what do those two use cases mean? First of all, settings is typically when you first uh, access an application, maybe you need to configure it to uh, talk to uh, or, or to reference a particular um, uh, indicator by ID that you don't know what the ID of that indicator is when you're building your application. So you need to configure it at runtime, uh, but you don't want it to configure it every time a user goes to your application. So you want to save that ID of that indicator into uh, somewhere that will, um, it will, it will remain and can be referenced later. Um, that's what the data store is for. That's what we call a setting. So if you have a setting for the ID of an indicator, you save that into the data store. Let's say initially we're saving that just into the user data store. Then whenever that user comes back to the application, uh, it can reference the, the user data store, see that there was already a configuration that happened, uh, that they chose a particular indicator ID, and then you can show that uh, right off the bat without needing to um, have a, them go through a configuration step again. However, if another user comes to use your application, they will see the configuration um, interface because the, uh, the, the configuration is stored in the user data store specific to the other user. Um, if instead it was stored in the, in the global data store and shared between all users of DHIS2, then it would, one person could configure it and everyone else would be able to um, uh, just access that information and see the uh, see the results or see the configured application. So that's what a setting is. Um, 
there's a lot of use cases for settings. Um, typically, something like referencing metadata in DHIS2 is a good one, but there are a lot of other ones which might be turning on and off features of your applications for, for specific users or specific user groups um, or saving information that needs to be referenced later that isn't necessarily configuration, but just is a, a piece of data that um, you need to uh, kind of persist longer than the session of your a user on your application. The, um, uh, the other use case that we'll talk about for, um, go ahead, uh, Deborah. Yeah, so uh, we can only see the same slide, uh, data store and user data store. I don't know if you're sharing a different window. Nope, that's all I'm sharing. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so the, uh, the, yeah, the, the other use case that we often see is called um, saved objects. Um, and what a saved object is, um, is basically it's like a visualization in the, the analytics apps in DHS2. So when you go to the data visualizer application, you can click file open and you see a list of all of the, the visualizations that you have already created, which have been configured in a particular way. Um, and there's, it could be one of those, it could be 10, it could be 100, you don't know. And there might also be some uh, visualizations that are shared with you by another user. Um, so that's the idea of shared objects or saved objects in the data store in uh, custom applications as well, is to have a sort of a lightweight version of that visualization engine where you can save the configuration of a visualization or the configuration of something that the user creates and then you can reference the list of all those things that the user has already created, as well as uh, use them to generate a visualization, for example. And we'll get into how to, how to use the um, data store uh, application service in order to uh, address both of these. Um, the, the second last line here on this slide talks about that service, which is available at DHS2 slash app service data store. Uh, it's packaged on NPM. Um, and we'll go through that in the uh, presentation today as well as in the, in the exercise. Um, and it basically can be used to interact with the data store and the user data store. You can also visit the data store manager application, um, which lets you visualize all of the objects and edit all the objects that are in the global data store. Um, that does not give you access to the user data store at this point. Um, but that can be useful for debugging and things as well. But you can also visit the, uh, use the API to dump all of the data from the data store and the user data store. This is again, the app service data store. It's, um, it's not an official service yet. So we're, we've developed it. There are a number of applications that are using it, but we still want to make some improvements before we officially make it a part of the app runtime. Um, and that should be happening fairly soon. Um, but for now, I'll go through what exists today and how, how it works, how you can use it in your applications. To add it to your app, just do yarn add app uh, at DHS2 slash app service data store. Um, we'll get into more of that in a minute. Um, first thing you need to do when you're using this uh, wrapper or this app service is to wrap your entire application in a data store provider. Data store provider is exported by App Service Data Store. Uh, you need to specify a namespace for the um, that your application will use in the data store, uh, and that then you can just quickly and easily set uh, settings and add and remove and update uh, and and view saved objects from that namespace in the data store. Um, I put a, a little note here down at the bottom. This is be sure to specify data store namespace in d2.config.js to reserve this namespace for your application. If you're not using the platform, you can specify that in the manifest file in the um, activities DHIS namespace. Um, but there, there's more about that in the documentation as well. Uh, it's important to keep this name as uh, unique as possible because if you, reserve it in the, whether or not you reserve it, but if you reserve it in the manifest file or in the d2config.js file, then no other application will be able to be installed with that same namespace. 
Um, this is nice for security, meaning that only users that have access to your app will be able to see that namespace and uh, no other apps can kind of co-opt uh, co it or, or override it. Um, but uh, if you use a very simple name like app, then it's very easy to have conflicts with other applications. So it's recommended to use something that includes the name of your application and is complex enough that it's gonna be globally unique. Once you have your provider set up in, um, uh, in the app service, uh, the app, the, sorry, the data store provider set up in your application, you can use these four hooks anywhere in your app in order to access um, the settings uh, for, a, for your particular application. So uh, the first hook here is called use all settings. And basically that um, returns a list of all the settings or a, a map, sorry, of all the settings that have been configured for your application. You can optionally in this data store provider, you can pass defaults if you want to have a default uh, value for that setting. Um, the all user settings, as we say here, um, re re returns the settings that exist in the user data store. So these are settings that are specific to this particular user. Whereas if you set the global true flag in the object that's passed to, to use all settings, then it will return uh, the settings from the data store rather than the user data store, which means that it is shared with all other users of DHS2. Uh, you can also get an individual setting um, from either the user setting, the user data store or the data store using the use setting uh, hook. And you just pass the ID of the setting that you want to request. Um, and that will uh, return that value um, as a user setting. Each of these also has a, uh, a set um, function that's returned as part of an object that's the second uh, return value here. Um, so use setting, for instance, has not only the value of the user setting, which will then cause a re-render of your component whenever that setting changes anywhere in your application, um, but it also has a set function, which allows you to basically set the value of that particular setting, or in the use all settings case, this set function takes a, an ID as well as a value and will set the value of a particular setting here. Um, going to go back here. Um, so that's, that's settings. And we talked about also saved objects. There are two hooks also for accessing saved objects. One is used saved object list, which will return the list of all saved objects in the namespace that you specified. Um, in this case, uh, there is a, we're, we're accessing first the saved objects for this particular user, which might not, which are not shared with any other users. So this could be, um, uh, problematic um, or, or difficult to, um, uh, to use in, in some cases. So if you want to do sharing, you can't use this um, saved object list. You need to use the global true setting in your, in your saved object list, um, which you can then do here. And that will return all of the globally shared objects in DHS2. There is also the, the concept of a specific saved object similar to a specific setting. You can use the use saved object hook and just pass a, an ID and exactly the same as settings, you can pass a global true flag to specify that this, um, it should, this ID one exists in the global data store rather than the user data store. As I mentioned, we can also use hooks, use these hooks to mutate the data that's our, that exists in the data store. So we have update, replace, and remove when we specify a use saved object with an ID. Um, we return the value. It will re-render the component whenever that value changes anywhere else in the application. Uh, it will then also have a function which you can call with a new value to update it. And this will merge with the existing value. You can replace, which will, um, as it, as, it's, as it sounds, uh, replace the existing object. So everything that you pass here to, to the replace function will be uh, the new object and the old one will be removed. 
uh, and you can also just remove the object completely. Um, and you can use a, do have the same functions in the use saved object list as well. So this has add, update, replace, and remove. For update, at replace, and remove, you need to pass an ID for the object that you want to um, modify. And that's about it for the for the data store. I'm going to go quickly through the um, uh, the code example that or the exercise that we'll have people going through. Um, but first, I'm going to open up the um, app service data store. So this is where you can find the um, the code and the some basic documentation in the in the readme here about this service. Um, so these are the the hooks that are available. This is the, these are the options that are available. You can also um, see some examples that are basically what I just showed you um, of how to wrap uh, your application in a data store provider. Um, there's a list up here of the, the properties that are um, uh, possible to pass to that data store provider. And then there are uh, some examples of the different ways to, to use these um, hooks. For the exercise today, we have um, a fairly simple, but maybe a little bit more complicated than the translation one um, uh, example. It's in this data store um, folder. You can fork a code sandbox by opening this link. Um, and there are four tasks here. So first you need to initialize your data store provider, which will be something that you do in the source slash app.js component. Um, you then will render a list of saved visualization objects. Um, you'll support adding new visualizations um, into the user data store. And you'll then you'll also support deleting those visualizations. Um, just to kind of demonstrate this, I'm also going to open up, um, uh, actually, let me see if I can do this here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, this folder locally and run it. So I, there's there's also a solution that's already available here if you have uh, any trouble or just want to reference this later. Um, and I'm going to show uh, what that looks like just so that we know what, what the goal is here. Oops. So data store solution, we go ahead and do yarn start. This is a DH2 platform application, of course. Here's the application loading here. Oh, and I needed to run yarn first. Apologies. Sorry, I think I, I did a copy on this, and so my node modules have messed up. I'm going to delete this and reinstall. But um, in the meantime, uh, when you open this up in the code sandbox, um, you'll see that there here you have your four tasks again in this readme. Um, you can then look into the source directory. This is where you're going to start first. You need to import the data store provider and wrap the visualization list in a data store provider with the namespace of this one. Um, you'll see that in our d2.config.js, we have res reserved that namespace um, for this application. Um, and then there are additional tasks. So the first task is in uh, app.js. The second and third tasks are in um, visualization list with a little bit in remove button as well. Uh, sorry, in uh, add control for task three. And then there's a final fourth task in remove button. Um, basically, we're just adding the use of the data store to this application. Um, and that should be should be good. Let's see if our um, oops, yarn has finished here. Might take a moment, but it should come up. And I will show you what the, the, the end result should look like. 
Anybody have any questions about the data store presentation that I gave um, or any questions at all? Yeah, there's a question in the chat. Yeah, so the question is, does this automatically create the namespace if it does not already exist? Um, it does create the namespace when you create the first um, key within that namespace. So that's how the, the data store works. The, it will not create a namespace outright. I'm not sure what's going on here with my, um, oh, maybe it's this. Um, it will not create the namespace when you start um, because the, there's no keys. So there's no name, the namespace doesn't exist unless it has keys in the, in DHS2 data store, uh, but it will create that namespace automatically when you um, set anything in, in the um, settings or saved objects. Uh, and as well, if you set a, a default value for the global or the user settings, um, it will create that when, if it doesn't exist, it will create that on startup. Hopefully that answers your question. So here, here's what we're what we're working on. I just logged into a server um, through my application on localhost 8080. Um, you'll see that I do have a um, an alert that I can uh, show by just clicking this, and it says I must uh, enter a name for the new visualization. So you can see, check that out um, if you're still trying to get familiar or comfortable with the alert service. Um, that's in the add uh, add control um, uh, file. And then we can create a name. So my visualization or something like this. Um, remember this is saved in the data store. It's specific to this application. So you can, uh, the, the structure of the objects in that data store can do whatever you want. So we're gonna go ahead and add that visualization. We can do another one that says, this is a test, add visualization, test two, test three. Um, so now we've created these visualizations. If I refresh my page, I still see these visualizations. If I go to um, debug 234 dev, which is what, which is the server that I'm talking to, and go to API uh, 34 uh, user data store, you can see that I have this namespace that was created. Uh, I can then go to that namespace and see that I have a settings and a save objects key. And um, I can go to the settings key uh, and see that there's nothing there and saved objects. I can see that I have those four visualizations and each one of them has a generated ID. So it will be globally unique. It has a name that we're specifying, but this object could have anything else as well. So it could have whatever properties you want that you need for your visualizations that you want to save. Um, and you could use them in your application. Um, for now though, uh, the end result of this is we, we can just add visualizations and then we can also remove them. So we can go ahead and remove those from the list. Um, we can now see that the, if I refresh this, there's only one visualization left. Um, and the, you can see also from this that this is saved as a, um, uh, in the data store in the database. So it's, it's um, persisted uh for uh, basically until until those objects are deleted if now i just quickly um log in as a different user So this user, because I haven't actually opened this application um, in the user data store, there's no there, there's nothing in this namespace yet. It, the namespace doesn't actually exist. And that's because the, uh, the these saved objects are saved in the user data store. Um, and they, uh, yeah, and so that's specific to the user that I was logged into previously, which was the admin user. I can now refresh this and say, um, new visualization, another visualization, add that. And now I'll see that it has been created here in this for this user as well. But if I logged back in at the other user, I would see the, the visualizations that that user had created. Um, Monjour had a good question, which is, can you store a nested object? So if we go back to the 
um, my custom namespace saved objects. We have this, this object. Yes, this can be a deeply nested object. You can't request the, um, like a subset of that object. You have to get the entire object at once in the, in the application. But if in our uh, code base here, we had said, for instance, um, um, I think it's gonna be an add control. Um, and this is giving away a little bit of the, um, uh, the result, but we actually call this add with a name, new, new viz type. And we say like data is some deeply nested object. Um, this would actually work as well. So I can save this and then create a new visualization. You should have to be careful when you're doing this because if you change the format of the object in the data store, you need to do the, ma the migrations that yourself. It's basically you're managing a database. But if I said, uh, refresh this and say, uh, testing, add visualization. If I go back here, you see that this testing has a deeply nested data structure as well. So it's a full JSON representation of an object in this. Um, here. Thanks for that question module. 